Hello and welcome to the second module in the Master's Certificate in Technical Analysis. My name is Stu Wisson. Now this second module is concerned with the basics of charting and these are essential for technical analysis. We'll start off with the easy stuff. You'll see in later modules that you can add a whole lot of information to the charts but we'll start off now with the basics of how you make a chart. People used to do this in the old days just by grabbing some square paper and a pencil but of course with computers and the internet we can produce practically any chart we want just for a few clicks of the mouse. Here's the first chart we'll look at. It's a line chart which means that it's just a line which shows the price of a security. As you can see on the left here we have prices 620, 640, 660 and the peak there's about 726 I think it is and the price goes back down again. The line chart is drawn by connecting prices and the prices in this case are the closing prices. When the market closes the last deal that was done whatever the price the share that stole sold at then that is the closing price. So for each day there is one point and the days are connected together to make a line such as we have here. Now actually we have a whole lot more information than that available. For instance we know what the first deal of the day cost and that's called an opening price. We also know how much people paid up to during the day and how little people bought the shares for during the day and that's the high price and the low price during the day. So we've actually got four prices for each day. We have the opening price, the high and the low price and the closing price. This chart that we've just seen previously only shows the closing price but we can add an awful lot and select an awful lot of information from the software defaults and selecting various things that we have available to us. In fact we're kind of spoiled nowadays. Now if you want some more information we could simply use what are called western bar charts which has been used for a long time by western traders and it looks something like this. Now we just zoom up an area here as we can see each day is represented by a vertical line. Vertical line from bottom to top. From bottom to the top that is the low price at the bottom and the high price at the top. The low price is the lowest price the shares sold for during that day and the high price is the highest price that the shares reached during the same day. You can see little horizontal lines each side of each bar. Now the one on the left is the price coming into that day that is the first price or the opening price. So the opening price there for just over 600 during the day the shares traded between 590 to about 620 there. So the opening price sorry but at the end of each day this little horizontal bar the right called the tick is the closing price and that's about 618 so we can see we have the opening the low the high and the closing price all shown in one single bar with the ticks for each day that is called basically a bar chart gives us a lot more information than you just get from the line chart now the next chart I'm going to show you and the one which we'll use most commonly is called a candlestick chart or a candle chart. This is the candle chart. Now if, you, if we zoom in again we can see that it's made up of white and black rectangles with lines sticking up and down from them. In some cases like this the right rectangles and the lines don't show below. In some cases we also have a cross pattern so you don't actually see the rectangle and that's because the rectangle is so short that it's just as if it was just a line. The candle shows exactly the same information as a bar chart but I think it shows it a bit more clearly. Just looking at the white ones the rectangle is called the real body and the real body goes between the opening and the closing prices. If it is a white rectangle that means the opening price is at the bottom and the closing price is at the top. Now conversely if it's a black rectangle the price at opening is at the top and the of the rectangle and it went all the way down to the bottom of the rectangle. So a white rectangle is an up day, opens low and goes higher and a black rectangle is a down day. Often you see those rectangles are in colour. Frequently you have a green up day and a red down day. There's always be two different colours and in fact you know you can select whichever colour you like. 
Now looking at these I guess that I should call them wicks because this is a candle chart. These lines sticking out from the top and bottom. In fact they are actually called shadows and they show how far the shares traded to on that day. So on this day at the bottom of the chart the shares traded as low as we can see but at the top of the chart the shares traded quite high. So that's just like the bar chart. The bar shows real to high but we've got a real body rather than a couple of ticks to show the opening and the closing prices. Now just moving on to another chart as you can see here I've added volume to the chart. You originally have volume shown on the charts and that's because it's useful to be able to see periods of high volume. And that's because as Dow said it does give you some confidence in the trend. You'll also see along the bottom here there is a daily chart and you can see the dates along the bottom. I want you to note that I only show five days a week because there are only five trading days. 23rd of November here has started the days that's a Monday and I assume 24th, 25th, 26th and 27th and then you get to the 30th of December and then the week through that. So on a daily chart you don't see gaps for the weekend. It just shows you the trading days. This would be the sort of chart that you would use most of all. You wouldn't use the line chart much and I certainly prefer to use this chart to the bar chart because it's simply much clearer. Next we'll look at charts using with different time scales, with longer time scales and then these daily charts. Now last time we left off having explained what a line chart was and what a bar chart was and what a candlestick chart was and we looked at them in their daily time scale like this one here and explained that this was probably the sort of chart that you'll be looking at most when you're trading possibly adding your own indicators and lines on it to help you with your trading but this is the basic layout of the chart you have the price down on the left hand side and you have the date at the bottom and each candlestick and bar of the volume for that particular day now first I must say that you will only trade on day charts you wouldn't trade on weekly or monthly charts but you shouldn't ignore the weekly or monthly charts here's a weekly chart the same land securities group this is the part we're just looking at here on the right and you see that it tells us a whole lot more about the way this share has been trading it seems to have come down to about 20 pounds in under uh, to under 4 pounds in March 2009 and all we're seeing <coughs> on the daily chart is just this little bit here where it's different between the fourth and uh, four and seven pounds a share now we didn't know everything about all that's happened here so you immediately get more information when you look at the weekly charts if we go to a longer time scale again the monthly charts and each one of these candlesticks represents a month's worth of trading and we see another surprise on the weekly chart we were looking from 20 coming down all the way down seeing a decline in price and we thought that was all there was but now we look at the monthly charts we see in those years back at the beginning of the 20th century it was trading trading fairly sideways and then had some consistent growth over a number of years and then peaked out at around about 20 and then it started to fall down again so it tells us a whole lot more about the company when we look at the longer term charts. Incidentally, I don't think anyone can deny that this was an uptrend when it was up to um, 07 to uh, up to 07. And again, you couldn't really deny that this is a downtrend from 07 to 09. So module one, we talked about the random walk theory where the academics were saying that it doesn't matter what happens before each time each day the price will vary randomly and as you can see this disproves that theory quite neatly that's how we manage to trade when you have trends in one of the ways in which you trade now when you're trading this would give you no clue at all about timing when's a good time to buy these shares but when you do what what you do is look at the monthly chart and then look at the weekly chart get an idea of the market. You analyze the market from those and then you come down to the daily chart. If you're doing short-term swing trading you'll possibly trade your time and share off this one. So again you do it this way. You do from monthly to the weekly to the daily. If you do it the other way around you probably have to go back to the daily with the information that you got from the weekly or the monthly charts so you're going back on yourself. 
One other thing here is you see prices go from 4 to 20. This is called an arithmetic scale, where, everything, where every two pounds is the same gap. You can also have a log scale for the same prices. This is not much use on the daily charts because you don't get enough variation in price. But when you're looking at a period of, say, years like this, where the price varies from 20 to 4, a log chart can sometimes tell you something different. Let's just look at the log chart for the same stock and for the same time period. Alright, as you can see, we've still got a dithering start. You've got an uptrend, and you can see here now you've got now got two downtrends for some reason. It's become clearer that you have a downtrend that is not too bad, but then you have a precipitous downtrend there from around about 07. And you don't see that when you see it in the arithmetic chart, so it looks like it's one constant downtrend. But on the log chart, you can see that in fact it has two stages, and the second one is declining in value much more quickly. Now, when you trade, we'll get used to all these indicators as we go through the course. Now, this is a complicated chart, and you can see a lot more lines added to it. When you trade, you'll be using a chart something like this, where we have trend lines. And these are the straight lines going up here, which follow more or the less the price. The moving average is the blue, green, and red. These are the prices which curve around here. Oops, let's just go back. And these are the prices which curve around here, and these are the moving averages and have another module talking about move bearing averages later. And here we've also added the MACD. It's called the MACD, although it's, uh, although it's uh, usually referred to in writing as MACD, but it's actually called the MACD, or pronounced MACD. Uh, basically, the MACD is a moving averages convergence divergence indicator, which we'll cover later. Now, don't worry about that. But this th this is an indicator that you again get signals off from, and we'll be talking about more about oscillators and indicators in later modules. But for now, I just want you to remember the basics: price on the side, time along the bottom, usually on a daily scale. And I suggest they go off, and if you haven't got a trading account yet. You can get one of these from the free websites uh, and the information that we have on the site. You can also use the charts that we have within the members area too. Next in module 3 we'll be covering trend basics and uh, I'll look forward to seeing you there.